with regard to uh, making cost reductions for ethanol production. Um, so thanks very much for, uh, for sharing in the cons uh, approach to this. So the, the last speaker in the session before we get to the discussion and the questions is um, Dr. Joachim Gerlach. Uh, he's from Sukhumi. I'm sorry if I butchered the name. <laughs> okay. Uh, Joachim is a business development manager. Um, so he will uh, finish off the talks uh, with the discussion of the sun with the process. Sun with the process. Hello everybody. In my presentation, I will give you a short overview of Suchi Me, why we're doing all this, and then I will go straight to our process and tell you some things about that. Suchi Me is a worldwide operating okay. Me is a is a worldwide operating chemicals company. We are having uh, more than 30 research places all over the world. And Suchimi is actually a quite old company. We are over 150 years old. Suchimi was founded in Bavaria in 1850, round about that. Um, the reason for that was the king of Bavaria needed someone to help him. The problem was at this time that in Bavaria there was a, a big drought, huge famine, and he talked to Justus von Liebig, a famous German chemist, uh, to help him with that. And Justus von Liebig um, actually invented um, synthetic fertilizer, superphosphate, and that was the inception of Suchimi. Um, over the years, Suchimi developed as a company. Um, it's very diverse. We have businesses in fields like absorbents and additives. So when you go to Europe and you buy edible oil, there is around about a 50% chance that this oil is treated with a product from Suchimi. The other big um, business from Suchimi is catalytics. So Suchimi provides catalysts for the refinery business. So nearly 50% of our sales are oil related. And that brings me directly to the reason why we're doing um, such a thing that, uh, like biotechnology. Suchimi wants to be ready for the, for the time when crude oil gets more and more expensive and these sales and this uh, its business start to deteriorate. Ah, there is it. Okay, I go right there. Uh, this is a short overview of your numbers um, about Suchimi. We have uh, around about 6,500 employees. Uh, last few sales were around about 1.1 um, billion euros. And uh, at the bottom you see these uh, six boxes. These are the fields where Suchimi is active. And um, the new field of enterprise for Suchimi is uh, biotechnology. And that's the reason why we are doing that and why we think that, uh, that Suchimi um, has a unique position in providing processes. When you look at renewable feedstock and the conversion to products, um, Many companies look at one single aspect, at biotechnology, for example. Suchimi, with this uh, experience in heterogeneous catalysis and absorbance and separation processes, is in a unique uh, position to combine these three things into processes um, which will then lead to products. So Suchimi looks at itself as a systems provider uh, to provide solutions for renewable feeds so out of one hand. So we do not look at singular steps in such a process, we look at the whole process chain. And that brings me directly to the Sanlipid process. You can see from the sketch here, from the process sketch, that's a pretty simple process when you look at the boxes. You have feedstock, you have to retreat them, you have to do hydrolysis, and you ferment the sugars you get, and then you get the ethanol out. It sounds very simple. Um, I want to point you out to the box below, that's the process integrated enzyme production. The process to produce uh, cellulosic ethanol from, from biomass is, is, is not a new invention of the last 10 years. It's a very old concept. And um, the reason why these concepts never went to commercial scale is in one part the costs and the poor efficiency of enzymes. And that's uh, one of the points we try to tackle with this uh, sublimit process uh, solution. We, we looked at the whole process chain, so the sun liquid process is fully integrated. We 
not, uh, we, we didn't pick out single steps there. We did our own enzyme development. So we believe that um, to produce ethanol from biomass, you have to be biomass specific. Wheat straw is a different kind of biomass than wood or sugarcane like us. So in our, in our opinion, this needs different enzyme systems for these different kinds of biomass. The next thing uh, we look at is the fermentation. As uh, one speaker before said, C5 sugars, hemicellulose, makes up around about 50% of the sugars in the biomass. And that you need to convert to ethanol too, so we, had a, we developed a solution for that too. And in combination with that, uh, we looked also at the ethanol separation step, and we found a solution there too. Um, now we'll walk you through four major achievements um, that, we, that we managed to do in this process. The first is lowest possible enzyme costs. We promote strongly the idea of process integrated enzyme production. The problem with an um, ad site or hub solution, so when you have enzyme uh, production far away from your plant, is you need to produce your enzymes, so you need an, an, a separate enzyme production facility. Which the, the nutrients go in, waste goes out, you need a, a purification, stabilization storage um, environment, and you need to, to transport these enzymes to, your, to the plant where actually the ethanol is product, produced. And there you need again storage, handling, and stuff like that. If you produce your enzymes process integrated, you can use the cheapest thinkable feedstock there is. It's the biomass. And um, you have to, to feed your production, of course, but for the waste, for example, you can use all the utilities that are already there for the ethanol farm. And you don't need any purification or storage or um, or um, stabilization because the enzyme is produced on the spot and can be used right away. So, low substrate cost, as I said, you use your feedstock that you already have at your facility up and produce your enzymes on the liquid cellulose substrate. You have no additional utilities needed because you have your, uh, the, the, your utilities already there and you have no formulation and logistics cost because the uh, enzymes are produced directly there and where you need them. So the process integrated production of enzyme is in our view the most cost efficient way and leads again to independence from external enzyme suppliers. I yields with optimized enzymes, that's the next point. This is a sketch um, where you see the improvements we did over the last few years. We started with a common known benchmark strain which was used for industrial cellulase production and this is what we achieved with our high throughput screening platform. This is an eightfold increase in production of enzymes and this is only the production point of optimization. We do optimization also in specific activities, we do optimizations in thermal stability, pH stability and all these kinds. And this is a sketch which shows you actually what I meant with substrate specific. The red bar is, was the best enzyme at this time with wheat straw. This is our lead substrate. And then we get a test substrate from a, from a potential partner. It was something other than wheat straw. I'm not, in the, uh, I'm not able to disclose what it was. And we tested three, uh, four different enzyme mixtures from, from our house and we tested one of our competitors. And you see a huge variety of performance there. And actually the one um, Suchi enzyme which performed best with beef straw wasn't that which would perform best with this substrate. So this is an indication how different substrates reflect your enzyme activity and your enzyme performance. And that's, that led us to the, to the, to the belief that feedstock specific enzymes are really needed up to 50% in increase in process yield. This is the point where comes the fermentation. The circle diagram shows you uh, simplified uh, content analysis of wheat straw. You see that cellulose and xylan together make up around about 60% of the of, of 
feedstock. So we have 40% cellulose, and we have 20, we have 20 of hemicellulose. And converting that hemicellulose to ethanol 2 gives you up to 50% of increase in ethanol yield. And that, had, that helps you a lot uh, on the way to com commercialization. We've achieved this with an advanced fermentation strain. It's a wild type strain, so it's non GMO, that's very important for you. And uh, this strain is able to convert glucose and xylose in one pot, in one go, simultaneously. Uh, this strain and the process behind it is, is, uh, is of course, patented. And um, as you can see, it, in the ethanol yield sketch, um, where we are right now, we are nearly at 90% of, of yield was theoretically possible if you uh, look at the um, C5 and C6 content after hydrolysis. And this um, yield data actually is the real thing. It's not a mixture of pure glucose and pure glylose, so it's a, it's a hydrolysate of wheat straw. The low energy consumption. Um, normally, when you look at the ethanol business, you do distillation to, to get out the ethanol. We have uh, developed something else which combines nicely with our uh, fermentation technology. So, in the end, we are able to reduce the energy need at this step, at the distillation step, um, around about 50%. We are not quite there yet, but uh, we're pretty sure that we can achieve this. Um, the nice thing of that is that this technology actually is based on a technology which was already there in the Suchini group. So we looked at one of the um, specific ex expertise in Suchini and we found actually a solution for that. So that's an example of how these different um, expert expertise in Suchini um, are able to be combined. And this, um, as I mentioned before, the, the process is patented and the material we use for that too. So with this separation process, we are able to save up to 50% in downstream processing. To sum this up, with this uh, concept of process integrated enzyme production, we are able to produce the enzymes at the lowest cost possible. The next thing is, when you produce your enzymes yourself, you, you, being a, you are able to switch between enzyme mixtures and that allows you to switch between feedstocks. So if you think of Europe, where you have um, different agricultural residues for example, you have cereal straw, you use your enzyme mixture for cereal straw. And then comes a time in the year when the corn is harvested and you have corn store. Then you can buy huge quantities of cheap corn store and when you put that in your factory, you can switch from the enzyme from wheat straw to the enzyme mixture for corn stover, and you go with maximum yields with different feedstock. And when you finish with corn stover, you can switch right back. So the concept of process integrated enzyme production enables you to run a multi-feedstock plant. High yields with optimized enzyme. enzymes. As I mentioned, we have feedstock-specific enzymes, which allows you to switch between feedstocks, and the enzymes are optimized for every single feedstock. Not only the hydrolysis step is optimized, but also the production step is optimized. It's a huge difference for a difference for the production strain if it's confronted with retreated wheat straw or with, uh, with retreated bagasse, for example. So these kinds, uh, these aspects are optimized uh, with our enzymes. Um, your the, the fermentation, the unique fermentation strain allows you to, uh, to ferment both glucose and xylose to ethanol in one go, and you have low energy consumption in the downstream process. All these four things together um, lead to uh, the statement below that the sun liquid process is, feedstock, is, is now feedstock driven. The process is flexible. Of course, you can do standalone wheat field plants, you can also do bowl on plants. The substrate, uh, substrate flexibility I mentioned before. Um, as, long, as long as you produce your enzymes yourself, you're free to produce enzymes for feedstock A or B and change between them. Um, until now, it's not a good idea to mix feedstocks. That would, um, um, would be not good because the enzymes are optimized for one feedstock, not for mixture. And uh, you have a certain kind of product flexibility.